All right. Just a minute late. What do we want to do today? Let's, see, let's load up. Working on gaming. We did Little Shop of Horrors last time. God, that was like years ago. Um, left off on Avatar. The Avatar built. Got some Ninja Turtle stuff we could do. Jack o' lanterns we could head back to. Let's do a quick Jack o' lantern. I'll just kind of warm up a little bit here. Fix my. So, uh, if we go to. Art station. Correct. What else we need to do? I'm not going to get any chat right now. Sorry, running a little bit later. Project. There we go. So, one here. Uh, some of the demos for ZBrush 2021, we did go through here. We kind of made a little pumpkin, a little dynamic pumpkin in here. So, And we made a little blow up cat and then also uh, here. So actually what I'm going to do, I'm trying to remember how I did this. <laughs> Seems pretty straightforward, but. Yeah. All right, so let's go over here. Let's go over Sphere 3D, go out of the, uh, uh, Go into edit mode, hit make poly mesh 3D. Let's go to polyframe here. And I want to put this or divide this up into equal sections. Now, when you make a sphere and you go down here to initialize, it's in um, 128 divisions. So if we say, hmm. uh, 128 divided by eight is 16. So every 16, I wonder if we could go in here and we could do a masking. Control tap to mask everything. We'll go mask by alpha. And we're gonna say rows of 16. Yep. No wait, rows of, we want one row. And then we wanna skip 16 rows. Let's see if that'll work. Hmm. Columns. There we go. 16. Been a while since I've done this. So, this is going to select um, 316, which I guess will work. I guess if we did a, a polygroup of this, well, let me do a polygroup if we did a polymesh 3D. No. Hmm. Think, think, think. I want to transfer this. We've already got it masked. I mean, you can always go here and you could do a uh, like an inflate through here and uh, control tap to invert that mask and do a deflate or I'm trying to think of there's a way to polygroup this type of masking. Yay, John. Um, yeah, it seems like it's been years since I've <laughs> live streamed. Uh, it's actually been a while since I used ZBrush. So trying to get reacclimated to the environment here. I spent most of my night last night installing SDKs, which is always fun. the funnest part of development. So we've got mask here, we got rows, we got intensity, and hmm, well, you know what we could do? We could say, let's just go here to our polymesh sphere. I'm gonna go through here, and I'm just going to grab a half through here. We may need to, we could, we could probably end up simplifying this. This is pretty, I have an expensive uh, sphere here. Let's also turn on X symmetry. That'll make my life a little bit easier. And we're going to go in here to uh, turn on our floor, orient ourselves in space here. So Z forward. So I'm going to take this one here. Um, put this one down half as well. Um, 
And I guess we could actually do an array mesh that'll give us the right amount too. It should be fairly simple. Yeah, I don't want to complicate this. I don't have to, but it looks like I already have. Let's do this. Go out of edit mode, which control N. Let's go in here to our sphere. I'm gonna simplify this just a bit. Let's have 128. Drop that down to like 32 and 32. And let's also go here to coverage and let's say. Thirty two. Uh, why is this so difficult? Like, literally, I did this in a demo and it wasn't hard. Hmm. All right, we'll just do thirty two by thirty two. We'll change that coverage up to three sixty. And we'll go up here to make poly mesh 3D. And we'll just do it manually. So I'm just gonna go through here with a simplified sphere. Control W. And uh, we'll go half. I wonder if I could take a way to do it uh, where you can do poly groups and just flop these poly groups here. The group. Yeah, maybe not. Okay, let's do this. Control W, same thing over here. And then through here, let's go ahead and take our select lasso. And we have our we're oriented space here, so let's go ahead and save a little bit of time. Uh, actually, we have that's all good. That's okay. I'm gonna take this one here. Control W, and then if I do a mirror, mirror and weld, I go ahead and get both sides. But then I've got to take here and get rid of that'll work. One other thing we did was we went over here to geometry, and we're gonna do a quick. Uh, edge crease. So underneath the crease uh, here, if you just do a bevel, there's no creases, so it's not going to bevel anything. But if you hold down Control, that'll go ahead and put in a uh, a poly group. I guess you could do a groups loops as well if you went through here and you did like an edge loop, groups loops, and we'll just drop this down to one. And that polish weight down. Uh, that'll go ahead and give you poly groups between each poly group as well. Um, hmm. Let me see loops, panel loops. I guess you do panel loops too if you turn off double and off polish. So you can just throw some panel loops in there and look this double down. That'll get you um, panel loops in there as well. Um, which one do I want to use? Go in here to. Geometry, edge loop, thing. Use that one. Okay, so we have a poly group uh, in between all of these. Yeah, that's okay. Take this top one here. I'm going to love you as well. Let's go ahead. Group. These together. So now at least we have an area that we can mask through here. So if I hit uh, Control Shift, do this. And a little bit easier. If we do Control Shift to isolate that, Control Tap, Control Tap to invert that. And then we do an inflate. access to uh, all of that geo. And then this is where we were doing like um, <clears throat> auth expansion and stuff through there, which we may do. Um, 
Uh, see, as if, and some of the same here. How's work going? Is a new still perceivable stuck in your management role or any chance of transitioning? Um, yeah, maybe transitioning. Um, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Yeah, we're doing a pumpkin right now just because, um, boy, I was I was not prepared today at all. So there you go. <laughs> so go ahead and hit uh, Control D to subdivide this. And I'm also going to shrink this down just a bit non-uniformly. And let's you know what we can try going in here to dynamics. Let's do a um, we get a sharper mask. We do. So here's the thing: if you grab this. You grab this and you mask it and you control tap and you invert that mask you see how the mask is a little broader it kind of has a little bit more of a fall off whereas you take this and you mask it and then you invert it it's a little bit of a tighter fall off um help us see. let's go in here and let's do so we've uh, subdivided once we're going to go in here to dynamic subdiv turn this on that's going to give us a, let's do a smooth subdiv one just as a preview and maybe We'll turn off gravity and floor collision and we'll go in here wait might be better Wolf. yeah so expanding is going to give us it's going to kind of um, give us more surface area so it's going to want to uh, look at those relationships between the edges and push away from each other and then that turns into like wrinkles uh, which is Okay, I don't mind wrinkles down kind of the middle, um, but inflate, what that's gonna do is push along the surface normal. So if you do both of these, it'll inflate and then it'll start expanding along the seams. And this is actually probably a little bit of a better result. Um, if you wanted to do like a stuffed animal where it's like, okay, it's stuffed and it's pushing out and it's full. And then uh, along these seam lines are getting a little bit of pop. <laughs> Hey John, John Costello and John Yu. I mean, I don't, I don't know if there's going to be anything worthwhile watching later. But as always, you're welcome to going on in. Uh, so yeah, that's always the basics of a pumpkin. Um, let's see how far we want to take this. We were going to do a uh, jack o' lantern, so let's see. And we've actually done one before. Uh, boy, I can't even spell. Pumpkin. Oh wait, we should probably do this. Some dashes. Jack O. Irish spelling. All right. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So doing the face and stuff should be pretty straightforward. That's just going to be a Boolean mesh. We can go as nuts as we want to. Kind of doing a. It might be kind of interesting to do like a, a subsurface one where you have like a crust or a skin. And then as you carve in, maybe go into. E shot and see if we can get that effect to work. I'm not positive how that would work right off the top of my head, other than two different material properties, honestly. But we can give it a shot. Uh, but really, you know what I'm really looking for? What does a pumpkin look like? Okay, okay. That looks pretty legit. Uh, a little CG pumpkin. Okay, so it's got that, and it's got this, and it's got. Uh, some lumps on it. Images, tools, large. You know, kind of a, anything super detailed. Something fairly representative. Hmm. Alright, that'll work. So, and having seen that, let's go over here to inflate, run, um, inflate. I wonder if we go in here, let's go to a BTC. Uh, so we're doing a cloth transpose. I'm gonna force that inflation just a bit. So I'm gonna break, uh, basically every movement, I can break that surface area constraint that the algorithm's gonna have. Uh, a little bit easier than going over here and telling it to inflate. You could stop and run, stop and run, stop and run. 
but it's also fairly easy. Do that, and then as I go down, you know, pumpkins aren't gonna turn into cloth. That all that's pretty cool. Um, I do want to just kind of dampen those tops just a bit, and I don't know why I'm avoiding having to sculpt. At the end of the day, uh, sculpting is what's going to get us through most of this here. So let's go to the top here. Let's do this too. Let's go in here to transform. We're gonna go to activate symmetry, radial symmetry in the y direction, and our radial count. Eight should work, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now we have kind of the same in all directions here. So we can go in here with our move brush and very quickly just kind of modify this in the round. A little bit easier. Then we'll put a little twisted stock in there. So we'll start with this. And again, we can always go back through here. Mask if you need to. Looks like this one has some pretty pronounced ridges, which some of them do, some of them not so much. We'll stick with, ugh, if we start carving a face on this or booleaning a face, it's a little bit tricky. Let's see if we just do this. Let's just go into actually our deformation inflate. Hmm. Can I make those creases a little bit too? Do a quick polish by features. I'm just to kind of reduce the ridge intensity there. Then on a general inflate with no. And let's go down here to masking, and we're gonna say turn off view mask. And go through here, and I'm just gonna do. Now I'm go. I'm hopping between. Uh, dynamic inflate and deformation inflate. So hopefully it's not com too confusing, but deformation inflates over here. That's gonna be your basic geometry deformation. So again, it's just pulling along the surface normals, same as the dynamic inflate, only it's not going to have the constraints of the algorithm on it that the cloth. Unmask here. Something like that maybe good enough start so we can continue subdividing if you want to at this point you could like dynamesh it if you're doing anything really super crazy uh, i don't foresee us doing anything but we are going to change that shape this so let's go ahead and i guess we could also use a former for this too go in and use like a gizmo deformer or something like that by his head face out up here something like that maybe uh for the twisted top here let's do let's try something like this uh we have subdivisions on this so it's not gonna let us add anything to there that's okay we can go through here and go ahead and uh inserts all these mesh 3d this is my star i like to keep in my scenes here so if i go in here to transparency mode down and i can scale down R to go back to regular transpose. We can go in here to tool save as our string. Already got one. Jack o' lantern. So we'll, you know what? Second one we're going to do. So we've got this, and we've got uh, this is my name. So when I go ahead and save this out, that's going to uh, inherit the name. And I can also use this to do things like go in here and add. Is that a cylinder? Go through and add a cylinder. And this maybe drive some of that twisted stock here. Now it is still stuck to that star here. So let's go ahead and say split mass points and hit W. And I'm going to go through here and we're just going to do a bend curve former. To put it along the right axis, I'm going to take this red cone and just pull that, then the orange cone and pull that. So we get these, and then we can just go through here, and I can basically put in our stem here. The cool thing about this is that I can go through here, and I can take the bottom one, for example, and we can go through and we can scale it out. And as we go up, we can either scale it out, or once we get towards the end, we can maybe 
uh, just a nice tape in there. And we always have control for that. And then as we go, we can also go through here and we can twist. So here's uh, squeeze and scale, and on this side is twist. So we can start twisting this one. And as I go down, Best way to twist this thing. Uh, fairly severe twist. Ooh. Axis. That work. Yeah, that looks like a twist. Uh, so you could use this geometry if you wanted to. You can go through and just kind of add. Some crease lines along here. You could also maybe use some IMM curves to go ahead and place that geo. I think we'll play it. Let's do this. Let's go through here, grab send piece here, and then delete hidden. And for this one down here, we're going to hold down Alt with our Z Modeler brush, and then delete hidden. Now uh, we can go through here and with our Z Modeler brush again and say poly group poly loop, and then every single one of these. And give a different polygroup here. That's going to give us a very fairly uniform result. We can always bust it out later. Now, if I wanted to do a group split on this, would that be a bit much? Because we'd also do panel loops if we wanted to. So when we were doing earlier, we were under geometry edge loop. When we did our panel loops, we had double turned off. If we keep double turned on, and we do panel loops, it's in that polish to close circle. I don't know. We'll do the opposite. Usually, am I wrong? Close circle is to maintain the volume a little bit more, but it looks like in panel loops it does the opposite. Uh, oh, let me catch up here. Um, oh, yeah, so Morpheus. So. Yeah, the inflate and dynamics. Uh, it is a little bit different in that it's using the algorithm to maintain surface area on the dynamics one when you inflate. Uh, and then on the deformation inflate, it's just going uh, vert, surface normal, out, away from that. So uh, a little, little less constraint. Um, if we could uh, ever get a stream like the older ones because I don't watch it. I have work bonds. <laughs> and the older work of yours is more... What? It cut off. I don't know what it's more of. Well, thanks, everybody. Um, oh, art-centric rather than tech side, just personal side. Go ahead and get some, making a model from base final. Yeah, we could do that. We could uh, we could make something. It's been a while since I've been like, hey, grab a concept and just... Um, saving the Z-Modeler brush for retopology. Do you have one saved? Mine will just not save the settings for some reason. Hmm, if you, well, we can try, let's do it. And real quickly, uh, so for anybody just joining us for the first time ever, uh, what you can do is, let's go into our comic key here, let's load up a tool. You won't have this tool, but you can load it up from a project if you'd like. You have this head here, for example, and we're gonna go into, let's go out of Xymmetry actually, and go to BTO for our topology brush. Drag some geometry across here. And we're going to say brush size down to one, tap on, and we're going to say split mass points. So now we have topology and we have a head. We're going to go out of solo mode. We're going to turn on transparency and turn off ghost. And we're also going to change this material so you can see it a little bit better and turn on polyframe. So now we have some topology on this head. If I go into, another thing I like to do is just to uncrease all. I don't want, want those borders creased necessarily. That's under your geometry crease menu. So when we go through here with our Z modeler brush and we hover over an edge, what you can do is you can um, you can switch your Z modeler. So your Z modeler by default, if you go to E Z M, that's just the Z modeler that loads up with Z brush. Uh, we can leave this vanilla. What we can do if we want to make a new Z modeler brush that does more retopology style stuff, we can go in here. If you wanted to save over this, you could. Uh, I, I'm always wary of that, but if you want to. Go in here to there you go. Brush. Go in here to ZBrush 2021, C program files, Pixel Logic ZBrush 2021, and then you go in here to Z data. 
brush presets and you're going to see I have a brush presets and a brush presets copy so the first thing you want to do is go in here control c control v and make yourself a brush presets copy so you always have something to go back to if you mess something up uh, so under brush presets if we go in here to z m here's our z modeler brush so this is the brush you're going to want to save over if you want to change this default uh, z modeler brush on startup i don't necessarily want to but there's a way around it so what we can do is we cloned off or Z Modeler Brush to select Z Modeler Brush and hit Clone. So now I have Z Modeler 1. So this one I can go ahead and change. So I can say, let's go ahead and Rude Snap to Surface. And then we have Attraction turned on and everything else looks fine. So now we can go through here. We can extrude edges. We can extrude edges. We can go through here and uh, extrude triangles if we want to. Then we go in here to Move and we're going to say Snap to Surface with Attraction. So we can go through here and we can move these things and then as we rude, rude, and let's say those didn't snap, you can go through here and you can press those a little bit bigger. You can move and they'll go ahead and snap that together as well. Uh, and then on face, we're going to say do nothing. So this should be a Z modeler brush that works like topology. So we'll go in here to brush. And if you want to, you can actually change this um, icon. So we can go to Alt. Like the icon, and that'll be your nice boring topology brush icon, but that's okay. So, brush save as, and in this case, what we're going to do, go in here, the brush uh, 2021 Z startup brush presets, and in here, we'll go ahead and call this. We already have a topology brush, we'll call it Z modeler topology. So, now let's go ahead and we're going to undo that and we're going to save this back into our streaming everything else looks fine so let's go ahead and shut down zbrush and restart it see if this sticks <laughs> so uh, we got that and then uh again let's we'll take a sphere this time take polymesh 3d to for a topology brush we'll start off with some topology here pass points here and then transparency i want to retopologize this but we want to go into so if we go into our z modeler brush easy m in my case alt q we had um that's our usual z modeler brush but then we have our z modeler topology brush if we want we can hold down control alt Alt O. So now if I'm in my standard brush here and I go into Alt O, it should go to a the topology brush, which now has uh, extrude edge loop and move by brush radius and do nothing uh, available to you. So that was probably if I had to guess, it was saving over the right brush preset if you wanted to modify the default. Z modeler brush, um, but if you don't want to modify the default Z modeler brush, you can just brush preset and do that. Um, cool. <laughs> oh yeah, and uh, 21.1.2 is out. So not on your screen, but we are updated. I think the latest release was mostly uh, bug fixy to me. Cool. All right. Um, how do you do UVing for characters? Uh, basically, put my seams where I don't want them to be seen and then just flatten them out. I'm more crazy than that, really. Uh, post subdiv on the thickness slider, order of operations with the button on and off again, new feature we've not played with yet. So that one is interesting. Let's say, let's do, okay, cancel out of that. So we have our topology here and say, okay, uh, this is fine topology. And let's go in here, skin shader four. And we go down here to geometry dynamic and turn on dynamic. And this is going to automatically do a smooth subdiv of two. And we can also throw some thickness on here. You're going to see as we crank the smooth subdiv up, it is creased on the edges and there's also a post subdiv smooth so even when i turn post subdiv on or off 
uh, it's still going to be creased. However, if we go down here to creasing and we say uncrease all, now you're going to see when post subdiv is off, it kind of smooths out and then post subdiv is on, it goes back to crease, but now we got sharp corners. So what this is basically telling it to do is I'm smooth subdividing up to three and then after post subdividing, I'm going to add thickness. Whereas this one was when it's off is going to say, as I'm smooth subdividing, I'm adding thickness. So the cool thing about this one is if I go in here into apply and then it's going to give me subdivision history. Okay. Uh, uh, if I do the post subdiv here, it's going to keep this very much creased. Uh, but when I go in here to apply, I'm not going to have subdivision history. In fact, I can't reconstruct because this uh, is, this is, this is, these are all reconstructable. If I split this off and reconstruct it, it would reconstruct back down. Uh, but this just has one single line. So there is a way around that where if this is a smooth subdiv of three, you could do a post, post subdiv of segments of, I don't know, like eight or nine, I suppose. Apply and then reconstruct. I forget the number it has to be. Uh, but I, oh, I'll tell you where you can find it. So if we go here to either my ArtStation page or my YouTube channel here, go to Super 2021, what's new? It would be here. Dynamic thickness, post subdiv, and segments. Video 46. You can check that out on my ArtStation page here. Or, and or, video 46 on the What's New playlist here. So, same thing. Go down here to video 46 and that'll give you uh, video 46 in the order that these things are, but actually video 38. Sorry about that. So, video 38 in this. A little bit more information on that. Exact thing. Um, but yeah. Load back up where we were. Streaming. Uh, I am in Zebras 2021.1.2. Um, can you read topologize and Zebras core? Gosh, that I'm not really sure about. It's been a while since I've been in Zebras core. The kind word, Dr. Pulls. <laughs> Are you planning to stream this Thursday? Boy, I should. Um, if I can figure out something I want to stream, that'd be even better. <laughs> Edit geometry, modify topology, delete hidden. Uh, boy, that's going to be, again, that's going to be on my tombstone here so that's okay so one thing we were planning on doing was we wanted to kind of give this some gnarly um, kind of geometry here and I guess we could use this as a capped ver we need a cap version in there uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and duplicate this off and keep the other one hidden and let's go down here get this mic out of my way sorry got a new thing here I don't want to be looking around the whole time hopefully that's fine and then we're going to go here to edge loop, panel loops. And if we just hit panel loops, this is what it's going to give us. It does kind of smooth it out a little bit, but it looks like polish of one is fine. That's not too terrible. And then we can also grab uh, some more thickness here. And I guess the number of loops is also okay. I'm not, I'm not I don't think that's terrible. And then also let's do this in context here. Yeah, I think that'll work fine. So something like that. And then as these are all still the same object, you can go through here and you can um, control shift tap and isolate just these inside areas as well if you need access to those. Um, but while these are all together, you can also go through here and just do another inflate and kind of stuff those back up. Uh, so if we hit D for dynamic on this one, I uh, usually this is what's gonna look like when it's dynamically smooth and it's not too terrible. If you wanted to, you could, if you wanted to make it um, a little more chunky style or a little bit more stylized -y, you can go through here and you can do like a crease polygroup and then do a crease level of like one or two even. Um, so div of three, I'm gonna back that off and then that'll give you a little bit more of a, like I said, a little bit of a different look there. Um, but let's do a crease level of one. That should be plenty and it also kind of gives us our ridges. Uh, and in reality, at least for my reference, the middles kind of bow out 
here. So in this case, do this. Go through and add. All right, let's do this. I need just a little bit more control. So what I'm going to do is go in here to insert single edge loop and just put an edge loop. Uh, you know what we could do? We could, if we want it right down the middle, multiple edge loops would say keep poly group. That way, right down the middle, but it'll still maintain poly group. I just need a vert down the middle there. And in this case too, if you see any areas that are a little bit, if these are too elongated, you can go through here and you can divide these up. I'm going to redistribute that geo just a little bit more. Here. These are okay-ish. Okay, so now we've done that, we'll just go back through here and we'll do a panel loops. And then now if we go through here and we isolate, if we go through here now and we isolate these middle groups if we can. Oh, they're just overlapping it looks like. So we've got all the middle poly groups here. We do control shift X to expand. Two, three, four, five. Then control shift drag. These are all the outside ones here. We could actually poly group all these at once. Give me all my insides. You know what? Try this. Got all the inside ones here. X, one, two, three, four, five. I don't know if that's going to do much for us here. But anyway, we can try masking those out and see if we can just like an inflate those. Or, you know what, barring that, you know what I should have done? Sorry. We're experimenting as we go. I'm not going to hit everything right out of the gate. Let's try this. Let's add, insert multiple edge loops, interactive elevation, and keep poly groups. We can put one right down the middle and also pull a little bit. So that way, and then I can just go through here, and then as I click and add, it'll go ahead and keep, maintain that roundness a little bit better. Okay. And then uh, for this one, we can go back through here and say, insert multiple edge loops, turn on specified elevation, so that way it doesn't add anything any roundness or anything like that. Okay, so now if we go through here and we do a pan of loops, and that squeezes those in. It's not a huge deal. I don't know why I'm so adverse to just going through here and fixing things uh, in the sculpt. Always trying to find that one solution where it's like, do I have to do anything? No, perfect. Uh, but it's not a huge deal. Go through here and just like use your inflate brush. Uh, off a line gets a cursor the surface there. And again, like we said before, we can go through here and deformation inflate. I wonder if we could even do a, let's do control shift click, control shift X, two, one, two, three, four, five, and mask invert. Go back over here to our dynamic menu. Say gravity off, floor collision off, inflate. Okay. Yeah, okay. That'll do a little bit of a better job to kind of just inflate those out. Okay, that worked all right. So let's go ahead and hit D for dynamic, and we'll do our whole uh, crease poly group crease level of one. That'll be the start of our little pumpkin dude. And then go in here with our move brush, and we'll go down. Let's go ahead and finish this out. Now, if we did need to cap this over here, we could just go through here and just, like I said, run an inflate and it that way and at this point you could go through and dynamesh it together if you wanted to or uh, do a dynamesh clone and then ziri mesh the, the ridges back on there and then just sculpt the hell out of it uh, for now we'll leave those separate i think oh boy okay so <laughs> yeah i need to i, need, I have a I have a little electronic thing, that's what it's called. Um, I need to plug that back in and the buttons to it. Mm. 
Yeah, even yeah, if I was to actually sculpt in my live streams, which I, maybe we'll do Tuesday today, or maybe we'll do Thursday. Um, it is pretty simple. I usually keep it uh, clay brush, Damien standard brush. Uh, right eye. Blurry. Which also doesn't help. Uh, yeah, Damien standard brush, clay brush, clay build up, and then maybe move, move Accu a little bit. That's about it. Um, okay. Belt restraints cost simulation because. Oh. So you have this is cloth dynamics, and then your cloth kind of envelops this. I wonder. Hmm. I mean, this is kind of hacky, but one thing you could do is you could transfer this object as a mask so that it wouldn't go through, but you would hope that. And so it was behind, it wouldn't want to like pop out of your object here. Let me think about that. Cool. Cool. And um, yeah, so, and also like move infinite radius uh, is another really good one. That's, uh, I'll use that one for hard surface a bit. Um, but let's go through here to, yeah, pumpkins, right? We can do that. Gotta see what this means, or what these look like. Good enough. So, uh, we've got our pumpkins here, and these are, this is a very regular pumpkin through here. And like I said, we can always go through here and mask and in that mask so we can go through and then do a deflate and I'll pull those along in there and now we can always add more lines as we go through so let's go ahead and then we can also keep this topology it's not terrible I'm not planning on doing anything crazy with it so this topology should be fine let's go through here unmask hit control D go through here with like our Damien standard brush and we'll along here quite as tight as I like, so let's go ahead and subdivide one more time. Here. And we'll just kind of drag on the surface here and just add bridges. Again, this is very regular. We can always go through and fit up a bit. But for now, I think this will work. We're going to go from kind of heavy to light bottoms here, a little bit more contrast in our lines. And then as it inflates out, I get a bit lighter. I don't know that that's exactly what's going on. Pumpkins. It'll kind of give the illusion that as this is expanding as a pumpkin, um, it's the, the wrinkles are kind of smoothing out. Again, I don't know that that happens in real life. But, so we're going to go through here, and again, just using Damien Standard, we don't necessarily, I don't know, corpse crack for this. Here. And then also we could use, we could try using like a little bit of clay buildup, but by default, this brush is a little bit heavy handed. Um, actually, I changed it to clay buildup. I used to be clay tubes. Clay tubes is probably a little bit more heavy handed. Clay buildup's not so much, although I may have changed the default intensity. So if that's the case, maybe go back through and hit control D to subdivide. Um, so now we're up to 1000. In this case here, you can see we're getting kind of that stuttering line through here. Let's, let's go up here to stroke. Um, modifiers, and let's change that roll distance just to kind of smooth that alpha out, or like extend that alpha along a little bit more. And if you need to, also you can take that alpha out. If you want to take alpha 06, a rounder alpha, and let's also turn off our lazy radius by tapping L. Give us again. It's going to kind of play build up, and even the the clay brushes in general kind of maintain their edges a little bit more than. Standard brush, which is good for like such something like this. Uh, of course, you can't use a standard brush here. Uh, by default, your standard brush is going to be on. I'm going to have a, a little trail behind it. 
So what we can do is we can turn that off if you want to, and then you can go through and you can add little dots here. I'll allow you to kind of get our brushes kind of um, a lumpy lumpifier. And then you want to keep the L brush turned on or the uh, lazy mouse turned on. You can do that, but you can also extend it out. So if you go in here, stroke, that's where your lazy mouse is turned on. So you tap L under lazy mouse so l is going to turn that lazy mouse on and off and then your lazy radius is where you can crank that up those nice really nice sweeping lines here but this is probably fine so at this point you know we have our base pumpkin kind of laid out here so one thing we can do is we can go in here to macro and say you know what let's do enhanced details on this so that would go ahead and enhance our details for us over here to our our what layers brush uh, so here's where you can dial in or over crank your enhanced details and stuff. I'm just going to hit bake all and that should be fine. And this is a, an okay pumpkin here. Now at this point we probably do want to turn off X symmetry and then go through here and maybe kind of you know, add some here with our move active brush maybe because it looks like some of these are pretty confined and we can also drop down our subdivision levels as well. So we'll say, or maybe Go through and make some adjustments. You're going to see we have that repeating mole bump or pumpkin there. And great. Through here, and we can standard brush here for our lazy radius. And go through here, and we can get, keep adding some more lumps and use our shift brush to kind of maybe smooth out some lumps. You can also use maybe Noisemaker for this if you want to go through and play around with um, surface noise. Yeah, looks a little bit weird, doesn't it? Hmm. Uh, so we can go through here and we'll add I think, scale. Marks along here, and then we'll see. Let's reset this here. Here, so we're going to make one peak, flip this vertically. There we go. Well, this will give us kind of one noise out along our object here. Add that or overlay that just a bit, maybe, maybe just morph that in slightly, and then we can change our scale. Add some surface undulation, so we'll say okay. Um, that is a bit much, uh, and in fact, we, uh, we can add, we can apply it to our mesh here. And let's go up one. The full divisions we have here, so we could go apply the mesh here, and uh, that's the result we're going to get. Uh, we can also do uh, mask by noise. And then we got a mask here, and then we can kind of control what we're doing through an inflate. Go through and inflate that. Uh, an alternative to that is we can go, well, not an alternative, but in addition to, maybe a good idea to go down here to morph target and store morph target, and then go in here to our, um, layers, just add, and then we can go in here and store it, make, make a new layer. So then as we go through here and say, okay, surface noise, apply mesh, we'll have this. And then globally, we can go through here and say, you know what, that's too much. Go through here, this down so that it's just barely affecting. Or if you wanted to, you could say, you know, it's not enough and over crank it. But I think just giving some of us that surface undulation is fine. Um, and maybe we do over crank it just a bit because we can go through here and we can say all. And then down here, we still have a little bit more. We can say switch. So that'll put it behind or it's as our morph targets. So we can go to EMO, our morph brush. Let's go back in here and use our morph brush to kind of dial in. Uh, where we want some of those lumps go through here and just kind of dictate where those lumps are going to go and we can turn on need poly paint on for any of this we can kind of use those kind of add some variation surface noise there
You can actually add noise to your brushes if you wanted to. So while you were using the clay buildup over here, any brush, but clay buildup system down here to brush surface, and there's a noise option in there. So as you're brushing with that brush, it'll populate with some noise. There's actually also a stroke. Um, wait, I need to get on my right contact. It is I can't even see through it. Um, or maybe I'm having a stroke. Stroke. Uh, lazy mouse under here. Oh, um, brush imperfection. You have stroke jitter, which is going to take your stroke and kind of bounce it all over the place. And then brush imperfections also kind of a little bit of noise. So as we're using clay buildup, you can see it's going to uh, indicate a couple different ways to do that. But anyway, the MO morph brush, go through here and morph through some of that noise. When you're done, you can delete your morph target and um, should be good to go do that. Go down here to our morph target, delete our morph target. Now we have kind of a lumpy bumpy. Um, okay, let me get cut back up again. Thanks, John. Um, let's see here. Yes, yes, see much core. Uh, actually, I do have a ZBrush Core quick start guide. I don't know how worthwhile it is anymore. I don't, it's been a while since I messed with it. But in here, there should be a worm with an apple. There he is. Intro to ZBrush Core. 47 videos. Um, but again, that doesn't have a whole lot of the new uh, functional lines they added. But that could be. With the new topo features of ZooModeler, do you see yourself using that more than your conventional Z for your retopology? Here to stay, just wondering. Um, I probably just for, I don't know, I haven't, it's been a while since I've retopologized. I might branch out a little bit and see um, what are the other options are out there that I haven't used in a while. Um, but yeah, probably in ZBrush, if I just see something real quick, uh, I seem to be using Z Remesher more and more, but, um, um, yeah, I could still see myself using Z spheres just to kind of plot out quickly. Uh, but it is nice to have the ability to go through and be like, hey, I want to fix this geometry. Oh, I could just do it in here. I can go through and extrude edges and stuff like that. So probably probably both. Um, I think Mike uses Wacom Intuos Pro Medium, unless he changed it recently. Yeah, um, I'm all Intuos tablet. Medium. Keeps my arms down, keeps my face away from the screen. A little more ergonomic for me. And a little bit faster, I can bounce around my screen a little bit freer. My arm in the air at the really good face. Uh, Magic Macro, where can I get that? That should be loaded with ZBrush 2021. So if you go, if you have ZBrush 2021 installed and go here, enhance details, uh, I should just. Oh. Hi, YouTube channel. Thank you. Um, what resources you just to learn every tiny parameter and function, probably the docs. <laughs> um, but even then, I don't know, there's some weird stuff. Like if you want to go deep into things like the picker, um, or even there's some weird stuff in document, there's some stuff, there's, there's a ton of weird stuff in here that I never go into. Um, you know, the, like, you know, it's like a layer menu. I never go in here. So probably trust or Gabriel. Out of the people I know would be the most comfortable with a uh, kind of a little bit more of the weird functionality. You can marker like the marker in here. You can use these to kind of like position objects on your document. Never used it, but um, you can do that. Um, but probably the documentation help docs. We do the pumpkin, carve a face or something like that. Yeah, let's carve a face. So uh, we can go through here. And so we have this, and this is just dynamic topology. So we hit uh, shift D and D. And I like to keep things dynamic for as long as possible, um, if possible. And at this point, I guess we'll go ahead and keep it separate. Um, but you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna over crank that. So I'm gonna say crease level of three or maybe even four, smooth div of four, uh, just to get a really harsh look. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through here and we're gonna kind of bust this up a little bit. So. We have this 
So we're gonna go down here to geometry and we're going to say, what are we gonna say? Apply. So we're gonna go make this real geometry and then we're gonna go through here and we're gonna turn off blur and we're gonna dynamesh this. And we're gonna hit no when that little menu comes up. Let's say a resolution of 800-ish. That'll work. So now we can go through here and we're a little bit freer now that we have our base down go through here and add a stem find a add a good picture all the right For some reason not being able to sit on my right eye is really throwing me off today I'm also not using as much caffeine as I normally do. Been weaning myself off all weekend. Boy, that's been tough. Okay, so a little bit of a guys. That's what I'm looking at right now. So uh, we'll go through here and we'll use our. You can use Snake Cook for this. I'm going to use Move Accu. I'm going to go through here and kind of pull this out in kind of a star pattern and kind of fill up these areas in here kind of pulls along those tracks here and then through here again since this is just dynamesh in fact drop that resolution just a bit I don't need a ton of resolution I just need to maintain those edges a little bit so 600 should be fine uh, and then through here Go through, let's actually use our uh, Orbs Crack Brush. You can find this one on Gumroad. You can Google search for that. Uh, this is just kind of like the Damien Standard Brush. This is a little bit of a broader fall off there. Dig in a little bit along those pre-designed determined paths. And again, if this is too regular for you, you can go through and you can break this up and kind of make these things helix along each other. Let's also crank up that Z intensity just a bit. So we can kind of helix these around and smooth these things out. Now you blend two of these together. Not so regular. And again, if you wanted to do something that was um, stylized but irregular, you could do a quick sculpt of it first. Like maybe do this first instead of like doing that whole painful process. You can very quickly go through here, make a cylinder, and then just start sculpting on it. You don't need to do the whole process I did where I'm like, let's do 97 functions just to get us a cylinder that twists. That's that's silly. You know, they can choose your battles. And also use sculpting to kind of solve some of your problems here. I seem to be getting more and more terrible at. I don't really use ZBrush that much in my day to day anymore. But when, if and when, we get back into actual content creation again, everybody, let's cross our fingers. I may get back more into kind of a free form brute force method, which honestly is funner and you get stuff done. So you got this. And uh, again, you can hold down Alt if you want to kind of pull up ridge here and then kind of into a ridge. Use your clay build up, use your clay brush. Like we were talking about earlier, just a few simple regular brushes. Let's switch back to a square alpha maybe. And you can use this crosswise as well if you want to kind of build up a long surface here, like muscles. That. Then go back in here and smooth. I have my smooth, by the way, smooth brush modifiers here. You can see weighted smooth mode is set to one automatically. So just it's just basically running a smooth stronger. Um, if you're doing some creaturey stuff and you wanted to kind of over crank or give an indication of like, hey, the skin is kind of rippling along here like a worm to kind of emphasize the fact that the skin is kind of overlapping or compressing on a side, you could do that as well. But it doesn't seem to be the case. What I've seen has been pretty. And also, you can go through here and you can use our pinch brush. You want to scale this down because now it's like, okay, we've lost our subdivision history, but that doesn't mean we can't go through and make broad changes still. And we can always get our subdivision history back. Well, some deal. So, you know what? Actually, I like the circle alpha better for this work. 
once we're done kind of messing around with this, we can go back to our Z remesher and then get our details back. Right here. Go back in here with our standard brush. Lazy mouse off. Go through here and again. Maybe add some imperfections and some knobs. And you can also use your trim dynamic brush if you want to go through and kind of knock some of that contrast back between the lines. You can even add like a square alpha to this. I wanted to add a little bit of a texture as well. Hold down Alt if you want to kind of bang some of those up. Merge some of those together and then go back through here. And you know what? Maybe there's another brush for that. Let's go into B. Yes. Hmm, hmm, where is that at? Brush, I thought it was under smooth concrete, but there's a, oh, blob. Brush blob, that could work too. So this is gonna kind of add lumps to our, it's gonna do some pretty outrageous things to our geometry, but that's okay. If we're gonna end up uh, dynameshing and Z-projecting again, um, that could be okay. Go through here and we'll use blob brush to kind of, blobs here, and in fact, let's go to our, in here and we'll add some well let's drop that subject down there's another kind of cool brush uh going here to the comma key brush go through miscellaneous cannot see water today Spherical. So you can go through here and you can actually use this as a way to get, let's crank that up very quickly, get a nice uh, spherical lumps. That uh, kind of also seems to introduce glitch on there here. All right, so uh, just a couple different ways. Add some lumps here, and you can always go through and you can do another enhanced details or add some noise here. Options, options, options. Options never hurt anybody. And then what was the other one you're using? Blob brush. BB for blob brush. Go through here and do this. So again, this is doing some pretty drastic things to our geo. Uh, so we may need to, there is, there is a way you can relax this geo. So if we have crazy geo like this, you can try going down to like certain level three maybe, and then saying, project, there's a reproject higher. We go through here and kind of smooth out some of this geo. Our blob, blob brush is blah 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 blog brush is introducing. We'll do reproject higher, even that geometry out just a tiny bit, maybe. I don't know. Some we're trying, and then uh, same thing for this one. Um, so if we go through here right now, let's do this. Let's just run a zero mesher on this. I'm, I can use those groups if I want to, but simple. So we'll just say zero mesher. Target polygon count of five is fine. We'll drop our depth of size down quite a bit. We'll just hit zero mesh, and I'll get caught up while it's doing that. Mm. Oh, uh, sorry if I miss any. I apologize. Advance. Um. Uh, yeah, so we're going to carve a face out of here and 
<laughs> there's a lot of things in the brush settings too uh, that I tend not to cover. Uh, so here we have our Ziri mesh version right here. This is probably fine, I think. So we can go through here and we can hit um, Control D to subdivide. And then under here we have, uh, oh, we, have, we do have project history. So I'm gonna go back in history here and Control tap and then go forward in history. So we now we have uh, the ability to kind of project history. So I can hit Control D to subdivide and project history back. Control D and project history. So now we have nice geometry. Um, go through and we can kind of alleviate some of that stretching on that blob brush was giving us. And then also have a little bit more predictable geometry. So we want to go through here and continue like sculpting this up or adding little baby tiny details. It's available to us. We can also go back through here and do another, um, another what? Else. Go back to layers. Take all. Yeah. Um. We gave me the last two years. Oh, program seemed weird. Yeah, uh, the the basic hurdles in ZBrush are going to be navigation and file handling. If you can get over those, ZBrush is actually pretty easy, relatively speaking. Certainly for the artists. Um, games I played. God, I'll get back to you on that one. What have I played in the last couple of years? <laughs> it's been a while since I've really sat down and played something. Uh, probably the last things I got into a. Uh, Fallout 3 in Warcraft. Um, been better of ZBrush allowed us to change navigation uh, hotkeys like Max or Maya. Oh, yeah. I mean, basically how I navigate in ZBrush is how I navigate in Maya. You know, you can use right-click navigation. So if you set your Wacom tablet up like this, so I have middle-click and right-click. So when you go into Maya, it should have the same type of navigation where you can like middle click to pan and then right click navigate. Um, so that's basically right click navigation in ZBrush with middle click to pan is the only difference. Cool. Uh, I've been awake way too long. At seven o'clock, I just need to change my right contact out. It is completely blurry. I'm a little bit worried now. Um, hopefully, it's my contact. Three topology. Um, uh, Max Phoenix Fume TP. Better still use for FX in production, is it, or is everyone switching to Houdini now? Uh, I guess it depends on the place. Uh, we still, I, as far as I know, I wouldn't be the guy to ask, but, um, John Grubner, got to ask on that one, at least for a certain affinity. Sam Gage, um, they, I, I want to say they still use Max for stuff. Don't quote me on that though. <laughs> uh, I don't get too heavy into effects recently, but I still feel like Max is being used. Um, but certainly nothing wrong with having more tools in your tool belt. That's for sure. It goes for anything you can do in production. There we go. Oh, we got this twisted. We got this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and run. Uh, we can do the, uh, well, do we need to do the exact same? That's just fine. Let's go ahead and just do another macro. Here. And you know what? That to me was actually a little bit much. I'm gonna drop this down a little bit. I'll hit bake all. Here we go. Um, John says the project history is fantastic. However, brush see brush pressure and crashes during the process unless you save renders in the settings. I'm assuming it will lose the previous stages. Yeah, probably. If um, you don't have, where would that be under file? Undo history. Undo history on. But I think it's on by default under three. Yeah, it enables saving in the here, but if it's not on here, um, yeah. Although that's gonna from exponentially increase your file size, I'd imagine. But yes, you really caught me live. Unfortunately, today, boy, we're having a rough time. 
Columbia, South Carolina. I'm gonna say I just had some. My wife has a uh, like a snack box or something, and we just got some Colombian snacks not too long ago. I wonder when the next box is coming. But not South Carolina, Columbia, Columbia, Columbia. Uh, cool. The difference between decimation and tessimation. Decimation is going to be um, tessellation. It's like tessimation is like on the fly. It, it'll it'll go through and tessimate your mesh. You can you can do both. I, I tend to use. I don't really use tessimate that much. Um, but I'll use this in conjunction with my Sculptures Pro, which can kind of tessimate on the fly with my brush strokes. Um, it does have decimate mesh here. You know what? This is one of those things where it's like, ah, I haven't used that in a while. So when I'm in doubt, <laughs> what I usually do, uh, and this includes me, as I go back to my um, playlist here, and what year was that? 2019? It might be easier to see on here. Let's go back to my page here. Uh, ZBrush 20... 2020? I really don't remember. History recall. That was ex history recall and extractor stuff. So that means 2019 must have been Sculptress Pro, maybe. Maybe not. Was that 2018? Oh my god. Going back in time. Yeah, 2018, what's new? So in here, do a search for 2018 Geometry Tessimate. Uh, this one would probably have a little bit more information on what exactly that's doing, what all the settings are, how you use in conjunction with Sculptures Pro. Uh, but generally speaking, I just use Decimate. You can use Tessimate. Uh, but there's more information on that here. Cool. Um, uh, I have right click mapped my one button on my stylus and alt on the other. What does middle click offer? Uh, just when I'm navigating in Maya, middle click offers uh, just panning navigation in Maya so I can use my tablet for my navigation. I tend to get really like uh, wrist problems if I do a lot of box modeling in Maya or any 3D program for a lot of time. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll just switch over to stylus navigation, keep ease my wrist limber. Uh, how to turn off left click on the empty area to move the camera. Um, turn it off. Uh, that I'm not sure because you can use right click navigation. But yeah, if you ever click in here, I'm going to do that. Maybe under preferences, navigation. Mm, I'm not really sure off the top of my head if that's a doable. I have to investigate that. I'm not positive. Uh, when I use the macro for nano mesh instances and I go back to edit mesh, a split screen doesn't go back to normal. I don't that. Is that normal? Meh, it might be a little bit buggy. Uh, and that, if that's the case, you can always go back up here to transform and change the split screen. I think it's also built into nano mesh, but even if nano mesh split screen kind of goes wonky, uh, transform split screen should still be there. Thank you, Bradley. And uh, yeah, I don't actually, I actually disable all the buttons on my tablet. Just use my, I have my left hand on my keyboard all the time. Again, your mileage may vary. I'm not saying that's the way you should do it. That's just the way. Um, put your day job instead of a zebra school, full-time teaching. Oh man, consider it. You guys would get real bored with me real fast. Uh. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, what should I make for my first time using Blender? Man, anything. Same thing with any program. <clears throat> it's all about problem solving. So you just pick something to make, and then you make it, and then you stumble, and you crash a little bit, and then you learn, and then you keep going. So I got. I guess we got this here. So let's go ahead. Okay, this is where it gets a little bit problem solvy. Uh, so if I want to, I can dynamesh this pumpkin and give it some thickness, but I do want to maintain an outer shell. So if I do, I want to carve back in layers for thickness. Let me think about this. So what I'm gonna, first thing I'm gonna do is duplicate this pumpkin off, just in case I need to go back to it. Now this thing over here, I can go ahead and let's play around with this. So I want to add some thickness. Like I said before, we can go through and we can 
Dynamesh this here. Say, uh, actually, is dynamic turned on? It did have dynamic turned on. That's why it was acting so unperformant. Uh, let's go ahead and apply those subdivisions and also back through here. Let's we just be careful you don't have dynamic turned on while you're trying to do a high resolution sculpt. Uh, let's go ahead and apply that. So here, go through and we'll do our Dynamesh result. And then we're going to go back and we're going to do hmm, geometry Dynamesh. We're going to say project resolution thickness. Uh, so first we need to have a subtractive mesh in here, which is okay. We can put that right in the middle here. And we want to add thickness. Is that how I want to do this? I can also use a Boolean of this actual object and, and deflate it and right, both. Okay, so let's go through here. Let's go and grab a cylinder and hold down Alt while we pull this through and that'll be our, and here display properties, double. Let's see this. There we go. So here's our subtractive mesh through here. And go back up here to our thickness here. So Dynamesh resolution to a create shell with a thickness of Crank that up like 30. Oh. Where the sub mesh insert was going to use an opening for the shell. Okay, well, okay. Oh, did Dynamesh this? Okay, we'll isolate this. We'll go down here to poly groups and we'll say group as Dynamesh sub. Now, I thought when I went in there and did alt, do that for me. Uh, so Dynamesh create. a second and this will be one way to create a shell we can also try using boolean mesh might work okay too and that that one i'm probably be a little bit less destructive because i'll be able to evaluate the thickness on the fly as opposed to seeing what the thickness is going to be, especially if it's going to um You reset your tools. I hit something to try to figure out this program. I can't get my standard brushes. Yes, under brush, you can go all the way to the bottom here and you can say reset current or reset all. <laughs> I like the idea of a military caterpillar. Kind of like, I mean, we were kind of doing a military caterpillar. We're doing our avatar thing. Back to. Oh yeah, and if you want to reset your entire ZBrush session under preferences, like John is saying, um, config. Uh, nope, it's a. Uh, boy, it's been a while since I've been in here. It's a. Uh, like he says. Config restore standard, and there's also a. If you really want to reset everything, why do I not know where this is anymore? There's. There's something really weird going on with either my brain or my eyeballs really throwing me off. Like I'm, half of my brain is stuck on why I can't see out of my right eye. Um, but anyway, so we have this and now we have some thickness and that's about, I guess that's about the thickness I wouldn't mind having here. And so we also have access to the inside. We can uh, isolate that and then we can go through here and we can do a, a polish by features open circle and go through and just polish that out. Um, so that'll be cool. So we can use this as our cut through. And then we can also try doing a uh, Boolean mesh. But for now, uh, this, this version will work fine. We'll go ahead and turn this one off. So now if we go through here and we do a Boolean mesh, and let's look. Um, back lantern faces here. Something like this. And again, we can go as nuts as we want to. Um, we can use an extraction or a Ziri mesher. Let's do this. Let's say, take this off. And we're going to hold down control and we're for masking. Let's back face masking, which is under brush, auto masking, back face mask. So turn on X symmetry here and we'll go back to transform. Activate symmetry in the X. 
go through here and we'll put uh, maybe a face on here the masking and this is going to determine where our boolean geometry is going to go uh, but just a little bit easier go through here and do it this way so bit of a nose mouth here something like this uh anything else we want to do Oh, I guess teeth, right? So we can add some of these teeth. Look kind of cool. There's another thing we need to consider too, is like putting a skin on top of here. And we'll see. Here. This is where it's really obvious that we have symmetry turned on. So we'll go ahead and hit X symmetry to go out of X symmetry. We start breaking. There we go. For some reason when I hit save or something, it goes into a weird mode. Tooth. Here and a tooth. Here. Oh. Up. So we can use this as Boolean geometry, like I said before. So we're going to control. Well, let's do this. Uh, a couple different ways you can do this. You can go ahead and slice this out and the modeler uh, a Boolean result. You can also just go through here if you want to do a quick one, just geometry. I know sub tool extract we're just going to extract thickness out of here and you might have some well first of all it's just a preview so it's going to go away if you move your camera uh, so we can go through here the smooth sub smart subdivision i don't mind uh, thickness we'll go ahead and crank that up a bit and i'll hold down control alt just to tighten that edge up a little bit and then that'll, that'll get rid of some of those uh wrinkly a uh, little leavens but we can also go through here and we can say accept That'll give us our actual geometry, so we're going to solo mode here. And if you ever need to, you can go through, unmask here, just grab control shift like lasso, and just take a little chunk of all the ones you want to keep, control shift drag, control shift A, and then geometry modify topology delete hidden. Uh, but this one actually turned out pretty clean. Uh, so we can use this as a Boolean mesh. However, this mesh is pretty gross. Um, we probably we could do this. We can do control shift. I had to grab all of these polygons in the back, control shift X to expand. Oof. Yeah, it's not good. That's a real clean grab. Just these front pieces here, hit control W. Now we have a polygroup for the front and then the polygroup back here. And a polygroup for the side. There we go. So that's a little bit easier to use. Let's make it a little more obvious. We have a front, back, and side poly group, so we can hit W, Control, Tap here. And now we can just extend uh, this in. So if we go through here, we want to use these to cut through. Then we're going to say, this is subtractive, turn on our live boolean. And then as this mesh cuts through our mesh, you'll see it update live. Um, however, like I said, not real easy to control necessarily. Um, Better way to do that. So one thing we can do is isolate this top one here, say delete hidden. Let's go ahead and zero mesh half, to size down to zero, and get geometry that's a little bit easier to manipulate. And if we want to, we can still go through here and like keep these edges nice and crispy. We've got plenty of control. I guess that'll work okay. Um, another thing too, it, this doesn't really need to conform perfectly to that surface. We can just go through and we can use shapes if you wanted to like try that. Um, shoot, let's try that. And go out of mode. Go in. Let's go to a flat plane here. Edit. Make plane mesh 3D. 
X symmetry and hit control D a couple times. We're gonna go through here. Say. And if you wanted to, if ooh, if you paint a face, that's face. Um or you know we can use a face as kind of reference and that's this thing to go through and see how well it works. Um just trying to find one. Well, it's not right. You know, we'll do it anyway. Um case. like this one. Up. Right here to texture import. Like that, add it to our spotlight. Down just a bit. Um, and you could you can have X symmetry turned on if you want to, but let's go ahead and turn X symmetry off. You can just paint like half the face here. And that'll give us our overall shape. And then uh let's also get shader. Um you can try going through here if you wanted to mask by color. Mask by polypaint. Here and select this. Then you can bring that tolerance up or down. Say okay. Turn off our poly paint here, so this is the result we're going to get. Um, of course, I need to get a little more resolution out here. Or you can just go through here manually and just say, okay, this is what I want masked. Um, yeah, it's probably when I move my, my head away from the mic. I really don't like, I, I prefer my, um, headset mic just because it's always there where I need it, but boy, those things are terrible for quality. Not that, I mean, there's a lot of stuff I still need to do for just overall sound quality, like get rid of the room echo. A room here. Let's go ahead and just those here. Okay, so turn this off, and this can be our uh, pumpkin face, and we want to make some geo out of this. So in, since it's on a flat plane, uh, I don't know that it'll make our lives any easier, but we can go through here. We can say geometry delete lower edge loop mass border. So we've gone through and we've cut this out. Geometry modified topology delete hidden, and sometimes. Zero Mesher can have a kind of a hard time with some of this. I'm going to go through here doing auto groups and we're going to do a group split. So now I can just manually go through here and say zero measure half, that size under zero, and then just get the geometry I'm looking for. Maybe. Square these things off. I'm using move accu here, and we'll just use this and we'll kind of wrap. This might be an instance where it's like, okay, instead of doing half, same, or double, or dialing in the exact geometry you might need, but. Again, we're just trying to get simple geometry, a little bit more controllable. And you can zero mesh all this at once, but sometimes zero mesh will get a little bit confused and it's totally understandable. Put down zero. Um, if you have a bunch of like, like little pieces here and bigger pieces elsewhere, um, it can kind of be tough.
and finally half. And then we're just going to merge all these together and we're going to wrap this and use this as our boolean. And maybe one more. Okay. So here. And you know what? We can just do like a merge. Here. So here's our merged one. And now this one we can wrap around our pumpkin and use as a boolean. So, and also we can use dynamic thickness, which might also work a little bit better. Uh, so let's go ahead and hit it B, create insert mesh new. Then we're going to go back here. We're going to say U can hide for a second. We're going to drag on our face onto this pumpkin here. And we're going to say split mass points. Go ahead and throw on this dynamic subdivision. And turn smooth down and thickness up. So this is going to control thickness of our object here. So if you move this back for our pumpkin. You can try going here and doing like a bend arc of wrapping it around the pumpkin, maybe changing the radius so that they stay a little bit more on point. Now, go through here and I move this to the bottom and I say subtractive and we turn it Boolean. Um, again, so we're using dynamic thickness for our thickness. Go through, move, scale, and rotate. Dynamic thickness. Push through. <laughs> Boy, it has to go away in there, doesn't it? It seems to be doing it. There's a little bit of a graphical graphical issue there, but I'm not sure if it's actually gonna make difference make a difference to the boolean or not. So we can't go through here and we can say, you know what, just give me a crease tolerance, turn on dynamic crease level of two, smooth set of three, kind of smooth those transitions out. Although I don't mind it a little bit. Tolerance down just a bit. Oh, well, you know what? That's not real geometry. That's why it's having a hard time. Um, so this could be one way you could go through. I use this as a boolean to kind of go through and cut this. Maybe. Cool. Um, make the mic through Discord. A good noise suppressor. Uh, and now OBS does two. Um, it has yeah noise suppression and noise gates and stuff like that. But what I really need now that I've gone down the rabbit hole and I've got like a preamp and you know, a road NT one. I could probably get a, a little mixer. Oh yeah, you could use uh, dynamic with cloth transform to wrap it around the pumpkin too. Um, in this instance, since that can, it's gonna like get all those little divots in there. I was afraid that if I followed, kind of the problem I was having with that extraction is that when the extraction follows too closely and then I have to go through and um, like zero mesh, or if it follows it too closely and I have to go through and add thickness, it kind of, it'll take those pinched areas and kind of do some weird crossover stuff. I was hoping that just doing a simple uh, bend arc, and this also allows you to do all sorts of crazy faces. If you wanted to do a simple, quick face, however you want, just flat, and then apply it to all different kind of pumpkins and sizes and shapes. Um, you know, also pretty easy. You can always, you know, change your pumpkin shape and size and go through here and change the face. Kind of match. That's kind of a cool one. So anyway, let's see, let's see how this does. So we're going to go through here and we're going to say, um, okay, first we're going to turn these off. You can use start groups for this, but I'm just going to keep it simple here. No difference between those. This is our Dynamesh version. Uh, and then we've got this cut through. So this is going to be not our skin, but just our, basically our interior mesh, I'm going to guess. We're going to say this is okay. And we're going to say you are going to be subtool 
close these down. Boolean with dynamic subdivision. Here's our U mesh. Looks fairly clean. The only thing we were thinking about doing is adding a skin material so we could really give this, like, really pump up the translucency on this material. In fact, we can go through here and just drop in the DynaMesh on this mesh here. Not like Boolean. Resolution down even more. Yeah, it's fine. fine. Uh, let's do this. Let's go down here to Display Properties. Say Flip. Now I can go through here. I can soften some of these transitions, or you know what? I want to soften everything? No. I just want to soften. Insides. No, let's do this. I'll shift Alt. Uh, flip your geometry back. I changed my mind. I get a little bit confused since. Uh, Really confused now that I'm an old man. We're here. I'm just going to smooth this transition out a little bit. I don't mind it sharper on the front that much. On the back end, I don't need it super sharp. And while you're in here, you could also make an argument for like maybe putting a candle in here. Maybe putting a um, and candles are pretty easy. We did that on the Zebra 2020. What's new? I believe you want to go through here. Do like a cylinder, edit, make polymesh 3D, search this out a little bit. I always like to do a quick unify, and then we'll go ahead and say dynamesh this. One here with our trim dynamic. And standard brush. We add snake hook or move accu. And then if we want to kind of wax at the bottom here, um, we could just do this. Hit W, go to Unmesh Mesh Center, and then if you start scaling and then hold down Alt, it'll scale along the X, uh, well, I don't know, the two axes that you want. And then we can go through here and uh, hold down Control Shift, and we'll just clip this back. Here's a little wax uh, base that's kind of happening, and you could put it on a table, and you could use on that, I suppose, if you wanted to. Uh, again, we're going to keep this simple because we're probably not going to see too much of this. We're going to go through here and we're going to go thick to thin with our standard brush here so we get a little bit of buildup along the bottom. And like we were using before, the clay, oops, clay blob brush might be a good brush for this too, maybe. A little bit tricky around the corners. Let's see if we hold down Alt. Mm, no. It's interesting though. Uh, I wanted to say okay, I gotta find this. I like to use for this brush. Regular old alpha. There we go. So instead of blob. Soft concrete does a decent job too. Bring that intensity up. Go through here, and this will kind of give you kind of a blobby look. Um, not quite so what I'm looking for. Crazy. Of course, you can always re dynamesh and all that good stuff. Um, as far as Wick, let's go through here and we'll do a quick uh, group by normals, crank that angle up just a bit so we can go through here and say Q mesh polygroup ball and just kind of uh, shift and push it along that surface normal here it out just a bit and you could use bend curve if you wanted to uh, 
That should be fine. So we've got uh, some sort of candle in here. So let's go in here to sub tools. Go ahead and click W, W, merge this down. Go to the top here, sit B, insert mesh new. Let's go back our craziness. One here and we'll just plop handle right in there. They split mass points and we'll go back to Boolean. There you go. So we've got a little candle sitting in there. And we can put a little flame on there if we wanted to. And split mass points. And let's also go through here. Hit control shift. Control shift A, split the all separate materials here, and then that flame. Um now we can go to brush cloth uh wind maybe. Blow this flame around. There's a good, good candidate for a laser touchy brush cloth. Um, mm -hmm -hmm. move hook, twister wind pull. Hmm, I don't know. Maybe cloth hook. And again, it's maintaining those uh, relationships here. You can always go through here and kind of twist things around. Still gives it a little bit of volume here. You can pull out the points. You can always go through here and do like a polish by features. Knock your shit back down. So I don't know. Maybe play around with that. You could also just make this a single plane instead of something that has actual volume. And then you could always give it a thickness later if you wanted to. But I don't know. Not sweat that much, shall we? I'm gonna be a bit here. We want to move just the candle. We can go here to um, move multiple, um, or might be easier just to say, you know what, everything. Get all. All right, um, that'll work. And I guess the only thing left to make is that skin shell. So let's do that real quick. Um, best way to do this. Go back to our, so here's our U-Mesh that we put on, which is fine. I'm gonna take this here. We're gonna do one more. Let's do, I just want to grab that skin. May or may not work. So we've got this one selected here. Go back down here to make Boolean mesh dynamic subdivision. Then control shift, grab this and this. They be hidden. Now if I take this, we just do an extract. Do I want to leave this single-sided? That in macro is gonna soften a bit of that. 
Ugh. All right, let's do this. Leave that. Over crank those details a bit. So when we go to extract, use that as our skin. Okay, so we've got this pumpkin we don't need anymore. We got this we don't need anymore. We're going to append our skin. And our mesh here. We've got a skin, and we've got the inside pumpkin thickness, which we can throw some other materials on. Also, go down here to smooth brush modifiers, and we'll change the min connected down to one. Maybe that'll work. So we'll give it a shot. So we're going to go ahead and turn on our candle and then turn on our thing here. So go ahead and say turn my Boolean off. And we'll say save as. Render. Uh, let's see, let me get caught up. Apologize in advance if I miss something. Yeah, there's so many ways to do stuff in ZBrush, not even funny. That's why I like it. There's a lot of different ways to problem solve. For sure. Uh, image. So we got this going. Um, let's just do, nope. Oh yeah, do this first. Start with our environment. So we'll give us a nice work environment. And you know what, let's get this over. There we go. Then we'll go over here to our environment. I'm just gonna kill that background just for a bit. Over here to materials, and we're going to say plastic, shiny, navigate to it, uh, shiny plastics only, please. Word shiny plastic. We'll just drop red on there for now, and we'll switch that out to orange. I wonder if I can just. Oh. Sir. Okay. And we don't need that shiny, so we're gonna that roughness up. And then for the flesh in there, let's see if we have a human skin. We can have skin head. And we're gonna drop that translucency down a bit. And you know what? Let's toss these over to a little bit more of the orange side of things. And in here, okay. over here to our lighting, okay, product, area light. All right, um, and then for this up here, oh boy, I'm talking about wood. Old wood. We're gonna go through and we're gonna grab the texture and we're gonna say, I wanna move the texture. 
I will vaguely make that follow <laughs> my sculpt. Sorry, that's really, I should have UV'd that, but oh well. Uh, and then also let's go in here to our textures here and say these are I thought these were linked. Guess not. Hmm. I want planks. That'll be fine for now. Do a little bit of a Those were linked. All right, so we have this, we have the candle, uh, the wick. This one. All right, all right, and here, oh uh, boy. Let's go into material graph here. I need to take my roughness, maybe input. See it, what a shiny. Fine. This be a little bit rougher, probably. And you know what I should have done? Should have done a little bit of a poly paint breakup on this. I wonder if I still can. Let's go in here to. Ooh, ooh. So happy. Take my contact out. Save images. Up. Go back up here to texture port. Okay, so we have this selected, correct? Yes. Go through here. We turn it on. You know, it might be safer. Sample this, fill it, then. At least we have a base. I'm not overly concerned with getting a perfect pumpkin texture on everything. Live. Just a little something to break it up. All right. Go back out of solo mode here and we will Resend it back over. And 
I know you want to update. I know you can update. I've done it before. Uh, here. Here. Fine, let's do this. That's a pretty cool looking pumpkin. There we go. So now we've got uh, this shell here. So we're gonna go into the material graph here. We're going to double click this and we'll update this node here. So this contains our poly paint. Uh, so we can plug our poly paint into any material or we can change the material as needed. I kind of like that. I kind of like that skin shader. So what we're gonna do, let's try this. I am gonna use the skin shader with just a different skin property. We'll go ahead and grab this translucent skin shader in here. We're gonna take our poly paint and instead of skin texture going in here, we're gonna take our poly paint here. These should probably be, in the bump map, we probably don't need really in this don't need. Oh, um, surface, surface. Loosen goes to surface. There we go. Now here, again, we're going to change E. And the actual textures here, bump and specular. Like, we probably don't even need them, but there's our mat cap. And the translucency we're going to crank right down. All right, I think that might work. And on here we don't need. All that. All right, I think that might work. So let's go back over here to our environment and see if we can't get something. Hold down control and drag. We can also go back in here to our material graph on our matte cap. We can crank up, I guess you guys can't really see that. Go through here and we can crank up our brightness of our matte cap. Yeah, I think that'll work. Okay. So, again. You know what? Let's crank up that contrast. One point two five. Point two five. Yeah, I think that'll work. Good enough. It's got a pumpkin. Got some textures on there. Uh, it's eight o'clock. So I'll get caught up here and then I'll bid you guys adieu. Um, yeah, we'll have to hit back up. I'm going to guess, like, if you're dynamically simulating this and this is a collision volume, you're just going to have to mask 
you would have one maybe easy way to mask would be in ZBrush, Z plugin. Uh, I think it's not easy because you're going to have to merge them together and then split them back out. But there is an intersection masker which you can kind of use. But um, another, actually, I just made this, didn't I? Didn't I? Underneath videos. Uh, there's intersection masker and there's also a projection paint. So you can actually use maybe projection painting uh, to go through and make a mask a little bit quicker that way. Maybe give that a shot. I'll link you to this here. Oh boy, I'm way behind. Sorry, everybody. Um, cool. Uh, again, really quickly before I go and take my damn. Uh, is there a way to smooth normals a low poly mesh with BPR and convert that smooth normal BPR to geo and then sculpt on it? Doesn't seem to hold the smooth normals that is. ZBrush doesn't have smooth normals that you can work on real time. Uh, you can, like you said, render smooth normals. You can export smooth normals, but sculpting in ZBrush is all. Yeah, Wacom into a medium. And if you want more of my hardware setup specifically, um, my YouTube channel here and search for workstation. I have two videos. One's a little bit older, but it still has the specs in there. And then one's a newer one. So if you go in here and you do like, um, do what? Do show more. Here's all my stuff in here. So into pro medium tablet, all that good stuff. And then here's the updated. Um cool. Get rid of it. Uh, locating non-manifold geometry in ZBrush. I know that check mesh integrity tells you if there are problems with the mesh, but doesn't tell you which faces are affected. Uh that, that would be a good one. Uh off the top of my head. Hmm. Off the top of my head, I'm not sure. You can uh for everybody else wondering what the hell non-manifold geometry is, you can go to this playlist here. I think it's in there. Um, get a playlist, go to new intro to ZBrush for ideation in here. And then in here, there's a number 54 ZBrush non-manifold geometry. Um, this talks about what it is and how you can create it and how it's a pain in your ass. But uh, as far as it going through and selecting, the only selector that I remember, I'll go ahead and make the only selector type thing I know for possibly problematic geometry is under that render uh, boolean, render booleans over here, the show clo show coplanar and show issues, but that's like a preview of the issues you're gonna have. No one for a uh, old cool, uh. Our John says, uh, auto groups for the same subgroups works to see if any geo is off. A stragglers, yeah, and then, uh, yeah, my uh, the little mesh cleanup you can do selections with. Or the pumpkin without a top cut. Uh, you could use a Boolean, you could use an interior, but it's something we didn't go into, but you could use the pumpkin and then duplicate the pumpkin off and shrink it down and use that as a Boolean mesh and then use another Boolean to punch in the face. Um, and that also work I think uh, again just getting caught up for a head out um yeah what would be uh, AMD Resin Thunderbird 3970X so got 32 cores I'm using eh, I'm using 100% but it seems to be streaming just fine probably um but yeah, but if you're ever doing anything that's like video editing or encoding where you just need to pump a bunch of stuff through, this thing has been a lifesaver for a lot of my content. And the ecosystem too that it allows. It's got like NVM M.2 um, drive, NVMe, PCIe 4.0, all that good stuff too. So everything and the RAM's nice and fast. So all of it, um, like John's saying, all of it's good as opposed to just, you know, bottlenecking in one area. Cool. All righty. Excellent. Thanks, everybody. I'm going to go see what's up with my eyeball.
because I can't see good. Uh, but anyway, that's how you can make a pumpkin. Uh, we may clean this up a little bit. I don't really don't like those planks. All you need to do is basically, you have a zero mesh here already, just UV it and then use the UVs. So, cool. Anyway, uh, everybody take it easy and I'll catch you all on the flip side.